When I went to the Hebrew school at the Chabad, at yes. the, with the Hasidim. So you did that, those DNA tests? Yeah. And what did that show? Um, really, it's 100%, almost 100%. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, sorry, this I'm is sorry. our guy. Hey, hey. I'm sorry. Society, I like to think the best example of this is Hanukkah. Uh -huh. the, the, the holiday. Yes. It's not a religious holiday. When they so. learn about Islam, Jesus in Islam, do you think they'd accept him then? A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahi rahmanir rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen This is the deen, this is the deen Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. We're here in Florida, alhamdulillah. And what's behind me? Future Dean Center, Masjid Megadawa Center. We're outside of it, we gotta get in it. That's why we need your support, alhamdulillah. But we're doing one of our first programs with our brother who's coming on, Yaqub, father, mother, did the DNA test, 100% Jewish, 100% Jew. And he's here to tell us how he came to this beautiful way of life, started searching, and he found purpose, and he found it in his deen, this way of life. So stay tuned for this amazing, incredible journey with this amazing, amazing brother here on the Dean Show in front of the Future Dean Center. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my brothers and sisters. I'm here today to appeal to you to support the Dean Center, a Dawah Center, first of its kind in the United States, perhaps in the globe, to support Dawah to non-Muslims who are interested in Islam. My dear brother, Eddie from the Dean Show is championing this cause. The building is secured. There's a contract on it. It's 35,000 square feet. It has plenty of room to run excellent programs. And we just need your help and support, no matter how little, in making this center become a reality. And you will have a reward from Allah for it until the day of judgment, bi'idhnillah. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yaqub, how are you doing? Alhamdulillah, I'm really well. How are you? It's really nice to meet you here in Florida. It's very nice to, for you to be uh, here in my home, my home state, my home area, Tampa Bay. Inshallah, soon we could be filming inside the studio. Now we're outside of the Dean Center. So we're trying to get inside, but inshallah, we can, that'll be happening sometime soon. But tell us, um, you have a very interesting story. Your father and mother are both Jewish. And what particular kind of Jewish um, denomination, how do you call it, or uh, name was it that you were, what, was it sect, or what do you, what's the name that you, what kind of Jew were you? So um, I guess it's kind of interesting. So that I didn't really fall into one category. I yeah. guess in America you can separate. Like they have them. Has Hasidic Jews. Yeah, I like to say that there's an there's kind of an order as far as in in America what you what you see in religiosity. Yes. So in the bottom you have Reform Judaism, the Reform movement. Um, they're they're basically secular for the most part, but following um, many traditions, but not necessarily keeping kosher or things like that. Conservative, working their way up, kind of halfway between uh, Orthodox and. And, re and reform, you know, maybe they'll have a kosher household, but still not really, you know, extremely religious. They might wear a kippah, they may not. Um, but there's the Orthodox and ultra-Orthodox, and so subhanAllah, I, um, uh, I kind of grew up kind of where between uh, reform and conservative, you know, still following a lot of the traditions and the holidays, and, um, you know, I, I went to, you know, Hebrew school all the way up until I had my bar mitzvah. Wow, so you had the bar mitzvah, you went to Hebrew school, yeah. did you f speak Hebrew? Um, not not conversationally because that's more. But you could understand. I, I could understand it, especially if I'm reading the Torah and yeah. um, and we would uh, we would memorize you know dozens of, of prayers. So I can still you know remember uh, Friday night services, Saturday morning services when uh, you know for the, for the Sabbath for Shabbat. That's that's what they would uh, and, and it's, everything's in Hebrew and uh -huh. um, of course uh, I actually did go to a uh, Hebrew school and. and Spends a lot of time with the Hasidim, the, the ultra Orthodox sects. Yeah. Um, uh, Is that with the curls? Yeah. The, the, What's the significance behind the curls? Um, it's it, so there's a um, there's a there's a there's a verse in the Torah, and it mentions about having um, the commandment of having uh, your 
uh, your, your, your side locks. Yeah. And so it's just, a, it's just, a, just as we, you know, you'll see um, uh, Muslims who, uh, you know, they, they, they would want to grow a beard. You know, while, while you don't necessarily, as, as a Jew, you don't necessarily need to, you, you'll see a lot of, you know, conservative, you know, even Orthodox, not necessarily growing them all the way down. Yeah. Um, just always, as you see a Muslim growing a beard out to here, or, or a, a woman wearing a full jilbab, fully covered, fully covered up, you know. So um, there's some, you said reference to it where? In the, uh, in, in the Torah. There is? Yeah. Okay. And then tell me when you, let's start off with the first Reformed Jew. Right. So the Reformed Jews are like, like those, you said they're more liberal, progressive, pretty much don't pray. I don't absorb Sabbath um, and all the other, was it like 600 plus commandments? 613. 613 commandments, yeah. those are like kind of out the window for them? So or the, pick and choose like a buffet? I like to think it's... Because it's, it's, you have some Muslims who do the same thing. Absolutely. Yeah. I like to think of it as uh, the way that a lot of American Jews, because a lot of, most of American Jews fall into the reform or conservative camps. I think the majority who I've met, um, by number at least, yeah. they usually fall into that camp. and so. I like to think of it as a. Um, they look at Judaism not as a, not as a, a creed to, to establish themselves in and, and believe like what, what what really is happening. Why why am I here answering the big questions? And instead, it's more um, what are the traditions that I can follow and be part of a community and and feel closer to God yeah. without having um, any. I would say any any specific consequences to think of. You know any any specific. Uh, you know the idea of when they hear. Uh, in fact, you know, people close to me, family members, when they heard, what do you mean by fearing God? I, I, I don't, why should I fear the one who, who, who made me when, you know, they have this idea of, of love and the idea of, of, of openness and, and, and connection, but um, that, always that negative, all the, the, the things that constrain you. You know, while the ultra-Orthodox, they'll, they'll have the ideas of, they even have the idea of Jahannam. And it's, it's mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah and, and other places. And of the hellfire. Of the hellfire. And they call yeah. it Gehinom. 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 And that's why you see, see in the Quran. And they, and, and they say that we will only be there just for a few days. And they, that so they, they believe they'll only be there some who are... Who are ultra-Orthodox. Yeah. Uh, the Hasidim, some, uh, some groups amongst those. You know, it's... it's un, so yeah. it's kind of, is it the same like, you know, say Muslims who, who die... And let's say they didn't, uh, they did some sins or whatnot. They might, uh, Allah knows best how long, but they might they have a good chance of entering the hellfire for a little bit of time. Is that kind of to get purified and then the, Allah can admit them in Jannah? From, Is this kind of the same thing we're seeing? From what yeah. I've read, it's very, almost identical to that. Yeah? SubhanAllah, it really is. Oh, interesting. I, I just think the maybe when it comes to the um, the scholars and how they how they depict the amount of time they spend in there, maybe yeah. they've quantified it, oh, it's going to be a week or it's going to be so, such and such amount of time. Uh -huh. but. Yeah, I, I very found it very similar. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, what about this chicken thing? <laughs> you know about the chicken thing? I do know about the chicken what's, thing. What's that about? Uh, so this is this is a uh, thing that they do, if I'm not wrong. Um, so th we actually just had the high holy days. Yeah. Uh, just not we, but uh, you know, the, we saw that many of the Jewish yes. uh, people were observing Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and then they just finished Sukkot. And subhanallah, there's something very interesting uh, that I found in Sukkot yeah. as well. Um, so with Yom Kippur, they, there's the night before called Kol Nidre. That's the that's the night that starts it. You know, the, the, they have the same thing where the day starts at night and uh, just as we do the the um, the night once the sun sets that starts their day. So that whole 24-hour cycle of them fasting that's their fasting day. They actually believe that Yom Kippur is the day that the uh, the deeds for the year are sent down, just as we believe is uh, the Laylatul Qadr. The, the, the deeds for the year are sent to the yes. angels and passed down. SubhanAllah, they believe the same thing. But on that night, one of the things that they say, you should get up in the early hours of, of the night. And this ritual uh, started off being... Um, it's, been, it's been depicted by many scholars, but it, it really didn't start until way later. So it's kind of like a, a bidah? I would like to. I'd like to consider it a bit a bit. I, to me, it reminds. It, it reminds now that absolutely. Yeah, uh, and it's a lot. It revolves around superstition now, right? And it's superstition, and then it, then you can, if you go deeper, it probably has some elements of uh, of shirk in there because absolutely. you're right. So you could see yeah. how Islam, Muslims are the only true monotheist, pure monotheist on Tawheed. Uh, because now if you look into a lot of these practices, you'll see that you're giving some kind of authority, power to other than God Almighty Allah. Right. So would, you say, would you agree? I would agree. And I, I think a lot of it comes down to how they take a tradition and add to it. And that's something yeah. that I found growing up 
there would be a lot of these things where I say, well, what is the meaning of this? Why, why, is th why do we have to do this? Or why is this in here? And then a lot of the times it'll be, well, oh, this is just because this, uh, uh, you know, they'll, they'll bring in an idea from uh, society. I like to think the best example of this is Hanukkah, uh -huh. the, the, the holiday. Yes. It's not a religious holiday. It's a historical holiday. There's no reference to in the Torah or anything. Nothing. Or what we have of the Torah, you know. It's not. It's not in. It's not in any of the books of, uh, of the Torah. Like or, when we say yeah. we, when we say Quran and Sunnah, right. right? We say these are the two. God Almighty revealed the Quran. We have it as in verbatim. It's there, tamper free, tamper proof. Then you have obviously just for those who are not familiar with this. Then we have. The Prophet Muhammad's way, Sunnah, authentic, you know, there's a science of Hadith, everything is there that you can verify that he said it. And these are our reference points, right. right? So are these in the reference points of what we, what we will you allegedly have of, or what would you say you have remnants of the Torah? So they, in the tradition, they actually have a very similar tradition. Yeah. So they have the Torah. Yeah. And they also have the, the other books that, um, when we say Taurat, you know, in, in Islam, we, we usually include also the stories of Sulaiman, yeah. Dawud, those would be in the books of kings. After the five books of Moses, they call that the Torah, the five books of the Moses. First, first, first five books of, uh, of the Bible. Right. Yeah. And then afterwards, you have the, book of, uh, the books of the kings, yeah. and then the books of the later prophets. So that's the Torah, the Nevi'im Ketovim. They call it Tanakh for yeah. short, the abbreviation. That's the, like the main book. And then, so those are, those are your core texts. But then, what we, as we say, we have the tafsir, we have the, exege the exegesis yes. of the Qur'an, they have the same thing, uh, and it's, that's in the Talmud. Yeah. The first, half, well, the first part of the Talmud, which is the, uh, the Mishnah, that's like the, a collection of, you could say, a hadith, a, yeah. a collection of, of narrations by, by the, the, oral, the oral traditions, the oral yeah. um, I hear Torah, what you're Torah, saying. the oral laws. So, okay, so yeah. go back to where you were at, say, yeah. this um, Hanukkah, yeah. just like Christmas is not in the Bible, there's no sanction for it. Are you saying it's the same thing like that? I, I'd say it's exactly the same yeah. thing. The, in, in fact, the story that is commonly told as and you were an ortho, you would say an ortho, you were an Orthodox Jew. I think I ended up reform in the end. Oh I, yeah. You, I think I think I, I really declined as as I, the the more the more I, I started off. You know, I, I grew up in a household that was more reform, yeah. more liberal. Okay. But, I see. So go go back to, to what you were saying now. Sure. You finish that point. Um, just that you know when you when you look into um, uh, the, the, see that that you have the the, the Mishnah and the Gemara and the Gemara is like what you could say is really the Tafsir where yeah. uh, scholars will say well this is what we did, well, this is what we interpret from everything. Yes. And that really likes Jesus, but from those you really won't even find anything discussing the story of, because the, the story of the, the Maccabees, this is what they, they claim it about. This is, this is just about one or two centuries before Isa alayhi salam. Yes. And so there's nothing, of course, in, in the books really depicting this. And the story itself is also, um, it's not authentic. They apply one story and connect it with another. And so they take the idea of this miracle that happened, which maybe it did happen with a believer, with a group of believers, who um, who had uh, only a little bit of oil, yeah. um, just so that way they could light, light light up their area and be able to pray, and, and you know, and pray to Allah, right? But this oil, uh, as as a miracle from Allah, from what the from what the story says, is that this um, this oil, which should have only lasted maybe half of a night or a night, or a night ended up lasting eight nights. So. That's what this miracle is. This, they're celebrating this miracle that happened. But this story isn't, isn't authentic. And uh, even rabbis will go back and say, it so, is, this so is there, true. So, so there are, just like Christians who oppose Christmas, they'll say it's a pagan holiday, you have ultra-Orthodox rabbis or Orthodox rabbis who also, they'll come at it academically and from an authentic, uh, authenticity, point, authenticity point, they'll say, no, this is not in our what we have of our scriptures, will they argue against this? Sadly, no. Sadly, no? No, and it's, it's because when it Is comes to traditions... A small, a small minority even? Maybe a small minority. Yeah. But even amongst uh, American Hasidim, uh, we would what? go in uh, to, to a local um, mall and they'd rent out the ice skating rink. Yeah. And, the, and it would be a, a, a Hanukkah celebration. Is, this, is it blasphemous to deny this? No, I don't think so. No? I wouldn't, because it, 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 I think when it comes to blasphemy in general in, in Judaism, there's not this idea of um, uh, going going wrong in the sense of oh if you if you if you believe this and you're not a Jew or if you believe it, it, there of course there are you know essential if you don't believe in 
um, the, the, the pure monotheism. Yeah. If you don't believe in Tawheed, then yeah, of course that would, that would separate you. But when it comes to the Bid'ah, I think they're a lot more lenient. But you, your bloodline is 100% Jew. 100%. I, wow. I even did a blood test. I can't find anything that doesn't look Jewish. Wow. So, so you did that, those DNA tests? Yeah. And what did that show? Um, really, it's 100%, almost 100% Jewish. Nothing really outlying that Eastern European Ashkenazi um, origins. And This is somehow. amazing because now we see, just like it reminds me of the Jew during the time of Prophet Muhammad's time. And he was looking at all the signs and it was few yeah. scenarios. One that comes to mind was the one who confirmed he was a messenger. Uh, was Abdullah it? ibn Salam. Abu Salam, uh, right? Abdullah ibn Salam. Abdullah ibn Salam. Inshallah. And he confirmed and he came up and he testified there's nothing worthy of worship except the creator of the heavens and earth. God Almighty Allah, Muhammad is the messenger. He confirmed. And now this person, this is an academic, right? He's a scholar. He was the best rabbi. He was the best top rabbi. So he's not trying to lose his position. Right. He's not trying to do this for money, for fame, for any interest, but for the truth. Right. So he confirmed that Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the Jews were wait, anticipating a messenger to come. So now he confirms he's the messenger, and you know how the story goes. And then they testified, he brought the people, and they said, you know, ask them about me. And then he said, they're the best, they're the best. You finish the story. <laughs> That's true. Abdullah Ibn Salam tells the Prophet Salam, Tell, uh, you know, gather, gather them, gather them, and, and, and go to them and, and ask them about me. My credibility. Now. My credibility. And they kept saying, he is the most learned. The, his father. The most learned. His father is the most his learned. His father is the most learned. Um, he is the best of us. The best of us. And then, and then, and they said, if, if, and, and if I were to tell you that he accepted Islam, what would you think? And they said, oh, I, I seek refuge in Allah from that. Is what they said. Wow. Or so, may Allah protect, or may Allah protect him from that. Why wasn't it like, let's look at the evidence? Maybe he's onto something. You know, they <laughs> maybe he's got something here. He's the the most intelligent of us. Right. And th and this is what the Prophet said. I'm right in front of them. And then of course he comes in the room and he and he, and he says the shahada. You know, he bears witness that there's in none other worship yes. Allah and that Muhammad is his messenger. And, right afterwards, he is the worst of us. He is the he is the son of the of, of the worst of us. It flipped and was, now. Everything they, flipped. And they kept talking about him until they left. The propaganda the, the worst. The game. Wow. Immediately, right in front of them. Now you took that same shahada, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. All they would have done at that at that time, or before that time, if they were living in Moses' time, La ilaha illallah Musa Rasulullah. Moses the messenger. Jesus' time, no. La ilaha illallah Isa Rasulullah. That's the same way of life. Right. It's, you know, pure monotheism, worshiping God Almighty, the Creator alone, not His creation. You did the same thing. What led you now from going from being a, you said waver before that, your bloodline, 100% Jewish, mother and father, Orthodox Jew, wavering a little bit. Were you wavering because you're seeing these inconsistencies, it's not making sense? And what made you come to a point where you took your testimony of faith, the Shahada, La ilaha illallah? So, like, again, like, when I say, like, uh, I, I don't think I could really consider myself Orthodox, um, mm -hmm. even growing up. Yeah. While I went, while well, when I was in first grade until third grade, I went, I went to the Hebrew school at the Chabad, at yes. the, with the Hasidim. I never really followed the Sabbath as a kid because yeah. that wasn't in my household. My, yes. my, my parents were liberal. They, they, were, they were more secular. It's, that's how it was. My family in general, I guess, was conservative. I went to a conservative sleepaway camp for yes. Jewish kids and where they, 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 they shoved a lot of uh, interesting thoughts, you know, into my into my mind at a young age, but that's what that's what happened. I, I, I grew up getting all these conflicting ideas of, well, these are these beautiful traditions and yeah. these these beautiful phrases. And when you read the the, the prayers of the Jews, when you, especially um, there's there's a beautiful poem that they recite at the end of a prayer service called Adon Olam, and I highly recommend you look up the the, the, the translation for it. It's beautiful and it's 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 Islamic. It's Islamic. You read it and you say, wow, there is Islam in this poem. But do you know what the kids will do? They'll sing it to the Barney theme song, to the Backstreet Boys music. They'll take, because it rhymes in a, in a nice prose, and they're going to start getting up, clapping their hands as if it's some sort of um, fun, you know. But this is, they're, they're, they're talking the words of Tawheed. They're saying, in essence, I, I believe one of the terms is, is uh, There is no power nor dominion except Allah, except God, and that's in there, and they're saying this, and they're clapping, and this is fun. Why aren't they taking this seriously? Who's, t who's teaching them Tawheed? Who's teaching them the essence of the faith? So I had no faith in that sense. I had no truth faith. So growing up, I grew up you know, going to typical 
you know, elementary, middle, high school, public school system, through and through. I was a secular kid growing up in a secular society, and I, alhamdulillah, I got the opportunity, very, it came out, it seemingly out of nowhere, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides in ways that you, you wouldn't even imagine. And so, you know, subhanAllah, I, I, I got the opportunity to study in Germany as an exchange student. Yes. Um, in, in my, it took up my senior year of high school, I was able to, you know, finish my studies and then, and then do this. And, you know, so I, I was able to kind of experience a new culture and, and that was another thing, you know, everyone tells you, oh, Germans, they hate Jews. So it's not, you know, in, in, in Islamic societies, oh, Jews hate Muslims or Muslims hate Jews. You know, when you're Jewish, you think Muslims hate Jews. And so the same thing you think that the Jewish people thought that Germans hate Jew, hated Jews. And, and so when I said I was going to Germany, they're like, oh, you know, good luck going to the, Jew, the Jew-hating country. And so, you know, I just wanted to kind of break out of these norms. I already started breaking out of these norms. So, you know, alhamdulillah, I finished that year in Germany. It was a beautiful study abroad experience, but still very secular. Mm-hmm. It was only once I, st- I decided to stay in Europe for my, for my uh, college education. I, went to the, I decided to stay in uh, Amsterdam, in the Netherlands. And if you know Amsterdam, it's not a city of religion. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a city of, uh, it's a city of sin, to be quite honest. Mm. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's around every corner. Everything's yeah. available and everything's legal. Everything, prostitution, drugs, everything. Yeah. They even, uh, you can, prostitution is a, tax, it's a taxable um, uh, job. Wow. For them, they get taxes, they get bodyguards, everything, wow. and so we, you know, same thing with with uh, you know weed and alcohol, everything's available. Mm-hmm. So, I go to the land of sin to go to go to study, and what comes of that? You know, everyone's telling me, "Wow, you know, you're gonna live the best years of your life. You're 18 years old. Everything's available to you, and this is the, this is gonna be the pinnacle of your life." Six months in, and I and I and I'm thinking, "Wow, if this is the pinnacle of life, I don't want to be part of it. I need to find the true meaning of life." And so, what do I do? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm kind of searching around, looking online, what, what kind of religion suits me? And I'll tell you, the first one was not Islam. The first one, Islam was far out from that because that was rules, that was something almost foreign to me. But uh, ironically, one day I'm walking through a book market and I pick up the, the Dao Te Ching, uh, you know, Lao Tzu, the Chinese philosopher. And so, you know, I'm sitting at home, starting to flip through this, and at that time, I was already, I, already, I think my belief in Allah had already dissipated. In fact, I was pretty much agnostic. From high school until, co- uh, until my first year of college, I was agnostic. Yes. I, I, had total, I had totally broken away. In Judaism, it was more of tradition. Just traditions. Yes. I'm flipping through the, 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 this version of the Tao Te Ching. And I start coming across phrases that I'm like, I swore I've heard this before. This isn't new. And I swear I've read it in the Bible, and of course, I've, I've grown up around Christian friends too, and I've been to Christian ceremonies and read through their book as well. I've read through parts of the, of the Bible, of, of, the, of the, you know, the can- canonical stories of Isa A.S. and whatever is true of it. And, and so I, I got the idea, of, and I started reading through this, and I said, I swore I've heard words like this spoken somewhere else in, in a tradition, and I swore I've heard this from Jesus. He said, I, I, I swore I've heard this before. And so I find word for word, I'm like, this, I, this sounds like something Jesus would have said. I swear. And I go online and I look up the words and I type in Jesus' uh, sayings, subhanAllah, right in the Bible. I find w- almost word for word, he's speaking the same truths about, about life, about the truth, about Allah, about existence. And I'm thinking, how does this Chinese philosopher on one side of the world and a Christian or not Christian, but a, 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 at this time thinking, a, a man who was born in a, in a Jewish, uh, you know, could have been a prophet, could have been something else, I don't know at that time, right? I wouldn't have known. <coughs> How are they coming to the same conclusions? And so from that point, I started believing in God again, because only if, if you can find that the truth can be found no matter what. Anyone, if, if somebody is truthful, if somebody is sincere, how can you come to the same conclusions about the, the reality of life, of our existence? There has to be a God. There has to be an overarching, um, all-knowing, all-wise God that is in no way anthropomorphic, which if you look in the, not just the Christian traditions, but even, even in the way that, they, that the Jews describe God and the way that they talk about God and the way that they, even from the Torah, you, you know, parts of it, <clears throat> we'll extrapolate parts of it and talk about God in, in a very anthropomorphic way, which I didn't like. 
they, 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 they made him to, they made... Wrestling uh, with uh, Yaqub, was it? <laughs> Rest, yeah, subhanAllah, Yaqub and... <coughs> Re resting, <laughs> resting on the seventh day. Oh, the Sabbath? Or? Yeah, God created the heavens and the earth and then <coughs> he rested on the seventh, giving those attributes again. Resting, yes. Yeah. Resting. When we know... Um, and he, 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 is, he, he is neither weary, nor does he need rest. Yes. Nor does he sleep. This is from the Quran. This is Ayatul Kursi. Ayatul Kursi. Yes. No. Yeah. As I'm starting to look into this, I'm, I'm, I'm really now devoted in defining the truth. And this, this study of mine, before I even get to Islam, and, and trust me, once I get to Islam, it's quick. But my, the whole study of, 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 of believing in God and trying to find the truth, I was at that time considered a perennialist. You know, as long as every religion, I guess if you, if you, you can extract some truth from it, I'll only, ex, I'll only accept, at that time, uh, because I didn't get to Islam yet, I'll only accept what I know, is, what every other religion, if you can pull parts from it, they all agree is the truth. And subhanAllah, I start taking, you know, I start reading the Bhagavad Gita, you know, Eastern traditions, Tao Te Ching. You really start doing your homework now. Really starting to read. Yeah. I'm reading, um, I did actually read a few books on, on Sufism, subhanAllah, yeah. that was at that point. Uh, so I did have some like dabbling in, in Islamic um, things, but um, books on, and then, I, and then I eventually sat down and I read the entire Bible, nonstop, front to back. You really went to work then, huh? the entire Bible. The entire Bible. The only time, that, the only thing that I stopped though is after, once I started reading the Pauline Epistles, I stopped because I realized he does not have the authority to be there. Uh, I mean, I, no, no offense to the Christians. <laughs> But I do not see an authority, as in he is not a prophet, nor is he a messenger, to be able to tell me how to interpret the words of God. Yeah, an example is God Almighty say, get circumcised. He's saying circumcision in the heart. Jesus said also uh, to get circumcised because he's following the, he didn't come to change the law. He was circumcised on the seventh day, right? Right. But you know, he was, he was born, he was circumcised. But Paul is saying circumcision in the heart. And that all comes down to the Pauline, the foundational concept of Pauline Christianity, which is salvation through faith alone yeah. and not by, not by deeds. Yeah, that's an easy, convenient way to live your life. And I, I never accepted that. And yeah. I would have... So you, got it, that, yeah. got, you got that out of the way, Christianity. So Christianity was out of the way, and I, and I, but I was still pulling all of these truths from... And coming from a Jude Jewish background, yeah. the whole concept now of Jesus being God, <coughs> you know, God having a son... Did the Jews, not just digress for a second, but how did they understand this term son at that time? Did they literally understand that? Because they'd be the ones who would know the meanings a little bit better than no. those than the Christians, no? When, when Jews say son of man or son of God, even at that time, they would consider it to be a, an honorific. Mm -hmm. um, metaphorical? Metaphorical. And, and even um, there's a hadith um, I can recall where... Um, a Christian man, he converts to Islam, but he's wearing a golden cross. And, and before the prayer, he, or, or afterwards, he... <coughs> excuse me. Still overcoming. The, the cold is gone, but mm -hmm. remnants. So the Prophet, um, before going to pray, he, um, either before or after, he tells the man, remove, remove it, for it is a sign of idolatry. Yeah. And so he does. He removes it. And they go to pray, uh, uh, leave reciting from Surah Al-Tawbah. Yes. And after the prayer, because the, 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 what he was reciting from, the, the verses were speaking about how the rabbis and, how, and the priests and how they were, uh, how, how they were taken as gods aside, yes, beside Allah. Yeah, wow. And so the, 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 this man, the, the sahaba at the time, he goes up and he says, no, we, we, never, we never worshipped them. So what does that mean? What, what, was that, what was that intending to be? And he said, did they not make halal what Allah made haram? And he said yes. And did he not make um, <coughs> uh, did he make haram that which halal, Allah, Allah made halal? Yes. He said yes. And he said that is what that means. Wow, subhanAllah. This is deep. This is deep. We're almost out of time. Yeah. Finish up what you were saying. Yeah, just finishing the story. Yeah, this is very interesting. Go ahead. And... Um, so, you know, so, you know, this idea of halal and haram, yeah. this was something that by that point, uh, there's the idea of the, of the truth. Yes. And at that point, I really thought, okay, Allah can only be this. He cannot be anthropomorphic. He yeah. can only be, he, he cannot have these limits that people uh -huh. are placing on him in, 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 in another sense. So, subhanAllah, where I, where I lived in Amsterdam, 
downstairs uh, from where I lived, there was a, a, a cafe. And this cafe owner was Muslim. And I, w I was already going to his, uh, his shop getting coffee, getting hot yes. chocolate, so on and so forth. Uh -huh. And he knew I was reading the Bible, and I told him I started to read the Quran. He says, great, if you have any questions, come to me. And boy, did I. <laughs> I was not the type of person who left alone. I would go and I'd sit down with him. I said, okay, so but like, I, I'm, I'm reading three parts, and I'm saying, okay, I just read this. Um, I will only accept it if this means this, 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 and this. And he said, subhanAllah, what you said, that's exactly what we believe. That's, ex that's what a Muslim believes. And I said, really? He said, yeah. And then what I'll do is I'll go back home, turn a few pages, and the explanation for what I was looking for was right there in the Quran. And that didn't happen once, that didn't happen twice, it kept happening. Where I was, I was coming to the, like, uh, I, I realized I was being inspired, or uh, it was only through inspiration that <clears throat> I was not being misguided in a certain way of understanding. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is really leading me towards a certain way of understanding. And that's, that, and it's, it was a very personal experience. You can't, you can't say that about just <coughs> seeing, an, uh, seeing a sign or, or giving examples. Like, okay, if you read the Quran and it has the proof of, uh, 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 you know, the, it can have proofs of the way that the, um, uh, the fetus, you know, manifests in the womb. And it is a miracle, but miracles aren't necessarily the, the only way that somebody will get, le will get, will get guided. Yes. And for me, it was a, pers a very personal experience of seeing that I was very, I was very confident. If, it cannot be that, uh, one good example, just about a couple of weeks before I actually took my shahada, I, uh, he invited me to stay um, in the cafe after he closed down the shop. And some of his Muslim friends came over. And we ended up getting on the discussion of just the term la ilaha illallah and they said yes yes it means um, uh, there um, uh, there is no god worthy of worship except Allah yes. I think they, they use that terminology there is no god worthy of worship and I said no I don't like that I don't like that translation because that's saying that there are other gods there is no other god There's it no. should be there, it should be um, like there is none worthy of worship. Nothing there, worthy of worship. Like, you can't say that, of worship yes. There are no other gods except Allah. So that's as if to say, here's Allah, and then here are some other gods, but only Allah is worthy of worship. But these don't exist. Yeah. So, I, I, so I was correcting their translation two weeks before I took my shahada. Wow, subhanAllah. And then one day I'm, you know, because at this point I, I already knew Islam had the truth that I was looking for. And now I'm just trying to be certain what, what kind of, you can say, what's, what, what, what direction in Islam, you know. Um, did I want to follow? And I'm, I'm reading, subhanAllah, like, uh, differences between scholars, scholarly differences of opinion. Uh -huh. And I remember another Muslim walks in, he's looking at what I'm looking at on my screen. Um, and he says, subhanAllah, this is what you're researching? Why haven't you taken your shahada yet? And I said, you're right, I don't know why. It was just, you know, the idea of what is this going to do to my life? But at that point, I didn't care anymore. I took my shahada the next day, it was Jumu'ah. The cafe owner, he, 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 we're best friends by this point. He drives me to the um, to, to pray Jumu'ah. The whole thing, you know, the, the whole khutbah was in Arabic. But um, you know, afterwards, he, he takes me. They take me to the front. I, I, I take my shahada again in front of everyone. I will. I, I cannot forget the feeling. It is not just the feeling of taking your shahada and feeling like you're you're weightless. That that I think every single uh, convert will explain that feeling of feeling weightless and and, and br all your burdens are gone. But the community. A Jewish community, will, when somebody says they're converted to Judaism, they'll be like, oh, congratulations, nice, good, good for you. Welcome, welcome to the community. Is and that even possible, truly? Is it possible? You can, but it takes a lot of effort. Uh -huh. I do know a few, actually. Yeah, a few. And, and, it's not, it's yeah. not the, the default. Like no, here. It's, not a, it's not a... Like you go on the street and you invite someone and they just like, that's not going to happen, right? In, in fact, in, in a lot of traditions, they, you have, they have to be rejected a few times. They have to say, no, you can't do it right now. No, you can't do it by the rabbis. Yeah. The rabbis have to reject them. I think it's three times, maybe wrong, wow. in different traditions. So you actually have to be rejected before, because you have to be, you have to show you have conviction in it. Yeah. Whereas Islam, you're welcome. But then them. you're not really even considered true, like you are, hunt, you know, bloodline and that. You're kind of right. like second, third. How does? Um, that's a, that's more of a discussion of uh, of where of what your uh, ability is. Like for instance, I, I uh, I'll go back to the the the, um, the, the Jumu'ah in a second. My lineage, from what I from what I know from my family, 
the, the, the birth like of the mother is the that, mother. That's, that's, that's the, the highest you know, level, right? Uh, Coming uh, from your mother's line. It's how you know you're you're Jewish for sure for by sure. by religion. Yeah. Um, but in but if it, based on your father, of what your tribe was or what your uh, what your um, you, you could say your your business in yeah. in the dealings of the, of the of the um, at that time it would have been like the the temple, but in this case you, you know in your own synagogue. It, there, there are the <coughs> the, pre, <coughs> the priestly class called the Kohanim, the Kohanes. Yeah. And then there's the ones below it. The Kohanes are, are like the basically the ones, uh, the the children and and the family of of Aaron, yeah. uh, of Harun, And then um, uh, below it, the, uh, Harun, um, and and uh, th that family was the family of. Uh, uh, oh. the, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we're on Route 60. We're not, it, we're not, it. <laughs> no, no, this is our guy, hey, 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 sorry. Sorry. hey, how are you? Sorry. That's why we got to get in the studio, you see a live example here, we're filming right out for Route 60, right in front of the Dean Center. So the Kohanim, uh, the priestly class, they were the ones dealing with the, uh, the goings of the temple, yes. the, the ones who actually were the priests leading the temple, and in, time, in the time of, uh, this is what they believe in, and yes. it could have very well been true. Um, and then the, the Levites were those, in the tradition, they were the ones who, did not <clears throat> worship the golden calf. Yeah. <clears throat> the one tribe that denied the golden calf. And that's why they were granted. Um, they were the ones who, they couldn't take any other job except to be in the, in the um, uh, service of the temple. That's what they had to do in, that, in, their, in their time, you know, uh, in the time of, 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 um, of Musa alayhi salam and going onward. Yeah. That's, what they, that's what they were designated to do. So I come from the line of Levites. Yeah. according to my family um, so th that's it that's more of a, a status according to what you have to do yeah I but see. it's n there's no hierarchy in a in a social way uh -huh. at least not at least not nowadays but I, I don't even think back then there really was so so now tell us finish off the Juma so the Juma the moment yeah. it happens what is it okay so la ilaha illallah you're looking at this pure monotheism yeah and you're about to make this decision paint us the picture what's going on so the, the the place I went to the you know the the brother he was Moroccan and the yeah. masjid um, over there it was fully Moroccan mostly um, from the Reef area of Morocco they all they don't even, they, I mean they speak Arabic but they also speak uh, Tamazight you know another dialect and I'm surrounded by <coughs> a lot of these brothers all they see is a white brother who and the, the, and the brother also explained you know I converted from Judaism but what happens especially this is right before COVID. This is November 2019, right before COVID. When you see not just people getting up to congratulate you, but you actually see a line formed to the back, wrapping so, around so the back of the mystery. So now you already did your shahada. So they're coming to give you that love now, that but, support. Huh? But, but seeing a line of people with tears in their eyes. Wow, can you imagine that? SubhanAllah, I'm speechless. I'm like, oh, why are these, these are people are that happy for me? I know, I ch I know then. Based on the, it's like a, a um, an affirmation. You see the way that the Muslim brothers, and th this is a room, a room packed full of brothers, and they're all lining up to hug me, to, to, to greet me, to, to welcome me, to make dua for me, one after another, and I was in such a daze. And subhanAllah, uh, that, that entire day, I didn't even know uh, how to respond, how to react, and uh, right after we, Right after the hugging and everything was done, I went with the imam. Could only speak Arabic. Mm. And we go to eat at a at a local, you know, Moroccan restaurant. I learned that you know we're eating with a big platter, so I'm learning. Oh, you have to eat from your side. You have to eat. Learning the sunnah immediately. You know, you have to eat with your right hand. But that's where that's when I learned about the story of Abdullah ibn Salam wow. that we just spoke yeah. about. Wow. So so th then, oh, you took your shahada. So. What would you say in an essence? It was a bunch of things or just one, one thing? Was it the pure monotheism, the Tawheed, miracles in the Quran, the prophecies, the literary miracle, uh, all these combined? What was it? Is there, you know, for some people it's this, it's that. Right. What was it for you that did it? It was, it was the definitiveness of the Quran. It was not, there was no wavering. When you read a philosopher's book, they say, very well, you could be here, you could be there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is exact. If you, if you are truthful, you know, if you, if you are a believer, you will be in Al-Jannah. And it, for the ones who disbelieve, you will be in the hellfire. And it is very clear of the descriptions, 
how one can get there, how one is there, the threats in, in a, in a I don't, I would say a beautiful threat is a, is a way that I, I felt. I felt a beautiful threat because it's, it's a realistic threat. It's a wake-up call. Yeah. It's not like a threat saying that, th that there's no threat from Allah to me saying, um, uh, like, uh, in a sense of, of uh, you, like, you, you are to choose, right? Yeah. It is not, I'm going to make you choose. No, it's, you are the one to choose. But know that if you are um, going to wrong yourself, if you're going to oppress yourself, then know that that will be your end. Wow, your is... oppression and your, and yourself are gonna, is gonna, is gonna cause yeah. your doom. And nothing, I've never see, come across anything like that. Not even in Christianity, because they, they believe Jesus can be the, the pure salvation. We are not guaranteed al Jannah, even, even as a Muslim, just because we, as in the terms of that we'll never touch the hellfire, we may touch the hellfire, and may Allah protect us I mean, from that. I mean. So we're, we're, um, we're out of time. I just yeah. want to just throw a um, couple things real short. Uh, do you think more Jews would come to Islam because now if they truly, truly knew the concept of God in Islam and also the true nature of Jesus, because they reject Jesus, right? Right. But that's because now uh, Christians make him into a literal son of God or to God in a trinity. Yeah. But yeah. when they so, learn about Islam, Jesus in Islam, do you think they'd accept him then? So, as I kind of started off... And that would lead off yeah. to Prophet Muhammad in as, the final? What I see in the standard American, because like, I, I, I can only speak really for the American Jewish yeah. community, they tie themselves to Judaism by tradition and by community. Oh, okay. And I like to think with, with any community that's tightly knit, if they feel that they have found themselves a, a home, whether it be, it, it can be anything. It, it, it yeah. could be um, in a religious setting, it could be in a, you know, a youth group, anything. Where they find themselves having belonging and meaning, they're not going to search for belonging and meaning elsewhere. It's only once they've dislodged themselves, as I did, yeah. as many, maybe some, I think you, some of the other uh, Jewish converts that you've, you've um, interviewed on, on uh, the Dean show before, yes. um, they, they always somehow dislodged themselves to seek, to seek out, to search. And so I, I guess the message is to those who are searching. You gotta be searching, you gotta be searching, the truth is there. Let's finish off, you've been Muslim how long now? Uh, three years. Three okay. years. Something that's recited and the Jewish, the Christian, Hindu, uh, atheist, whoever, you can even repeat this prayer on your own. It's called the, the opening, the Al-Fatiha, the first chapter of the Quran. I always put my guests a little bit on the spot. <laughs> I like to hear this opening. It's in the original language, in the Arabic. Can you recite it for us, please? Sure, inshallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Alhamdulillahir rabbil alameen الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين Beautiful, this is uh... Just amazing, praising God Almighty, the Creator Allah, confirming He is the most merciful, the most gracious, the owner of the day of judgment. And this is the part right here. Show me the straight way, guide me to the straight way, because you is the one alone that we worship. So I'll leave you with that. Ask the Creator of the heavens and earth, like you did, for guidance. And I'm so happy we're making some history here that we're literally on this street called Route 60 in Florida Future Dean Center and you got I got we got a lot more to talk about this <laughs> we just started I mean I'd love to have you inshallah God willing back on next time we could be inshallah. inshallah inside the Dean Center so make sure you're supporting so we can go ahead and make this a reality and do your part your small part and contribute thank you very much thank you yeah, cool. <laughs> thank you brother Zakallah <laughs> salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and you don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss exciting episodes like this salam alaikum peace be with you do not leave without giving you a gift if you're not yet Muslim and you tune in to see what these Muslims are talking about and you like a free copy of the Quran go ahead and visit thedeanshow.com we'll take care of the postage and everything and get it delivered to you and if you still have some questions 
about Islam, call us at 1-800-662-4752. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. And if you like this episode of The Dean Show, like this video, share this video far and wide, and support us on our Patreon page so we can continue this work. Thank you for tuning in. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum.